Good morning, Cube Curators. Welcome to another Cuban Coffee. So I was revisiting the overview section of my own cube on Cube Cobra, going back through, making some updates, uh, reviewing what I had written there. And that got me thinking about how a cube is overall built and curated and how curators should routinely revisit their original vision to ensure that the card choices that they're making as they update their cubes uh, are aligned with that original vision. Now that's not to say that cubes can evolve as I personally work towards curating my cube, you know, adding cards from new sets, uh, like the Brothers War that just came out, one for one swaps. I wanna make sure that the changes that I'm making uh, are in line with my original play goals and vision. You see, as a cube curator, our job is no different uh, than the paid employees at WOTC uh, who are working in research and design. So over the last 30 years, WOTC has really refined uh, the way they build and design sets, uh, and they've improved on that process. So today, uh, in today's WOTC, there are three distinct phases of design that WOTC goes through for each set that they build. You have vision design, set design, and play design. Mark Rosewater has a great article on his uh, Make Making Magic series that talks about those different factions of design, and I will link it down below. But in, in broad brushstrokes, here are those three phases kind of outlined. First, you have vision design, and Mark says that vision design's job is to be a metaphorical architect drawing the blueprints for the set to come. Uh, so, so what does that mean? Some examples, right? So imagine you're building a house. It's a common, common analogy here. And vision design is the blueprints for that house. It's the foundation that that set is going to live upon and draw upon. For example, uh, in vision design for cube, you're going to be determining, you know, what is your overall power level that you want to support? Legacy, popper, some sort of what, what kind of power level band are you looking to curate? Uh, as well as kind of, you know, what is the overall play goals you want to have? Maybe you're building a two-headed giant cube. Like I talked about with Anthony over on the Uber Cube podcast the other day, right? That you're going to make different design decisions if you're building a two-headed giant cube versus a 1v1, you know, legacy power cube. Vision design also includes selecting some, some key cards that you want to cube with. So Andy Mangold at Lucky Paper, he routinely says like, hey, I want to build, you know, X, Y, Z cube because I want to play with these cards that don't have a home in other environments. So, for example, maybe you're interested in third path iconoclast from the Brothers War and you want to build a cube that really supports spell slinging. Right. So third path iconoclast would be an example of kind of one of those vision design picked cards that you want to, you know, build your cube around. So once the vision design is complete, WOTC then moves into what they call set design. And so Mark uh, Rosewater says for set design, he says set design is responsible for making the list, right? That final file. Uh, and so metaphorically speaking, set design is building the actual house upon the blueprints that vision design set forth, right? So set design's job is also very difficult because they have to actually complete the file. So for us cube curators, that is putting all the cards in the cube uh, to get to the cube size that you're trying to curate. And then more specifically, right, set design is selecting the specific mechanics and fleshing out the archetypes within the space that vision design has outlined. Uh, additionally, you may originally think that a certain uh, mechanic will fit with your vision and then find out that it doesn't. And so set design fixes or replaces those mechanics that don't fit uh, that underlying vision. So once set design is complete, then WOTC goes to what they call play design. And you can kind of anal analogous this to just to, to play testing, right? Mark says that play design is a group in-house that works with the overall research and design. So like set design team and their focus is on the health of that core format. In the cube world, think of play design as doing archetype balance uh, as fans or hypergeometric calculations, as well as testing to ensure 
you know, archetypes are sufficiently supported, addressing any cards that don't, that are broken, right? That don't fit in your overall queue. And you can also consider your play group. <laughs> My cats are going crazy over there. You can also consider your play group that you, you uh, cube with part of your play design team. So listen to your play group. If they give you feedback about certain cards as a, like that aren't really fitting, you can, you can internalize that as feedback of from play design be like hey i probably need to look at this card a little closer to see if it really fits within my overall vision uh, for my cube so again remember all this construction play testing tuning is built upon that original foundation that was outlined uh, in vision design so as curators if you're looking to build a new cube spend some time in vision design so really outline uh, your broad goals for the environment you're looking to curate. Moreover, if you have an existing cube, uh, I encourage you to go back, take a look back at what your original vision is, maybe write it down, uh, put it in that cube overview section in, in Cube Cobra, and make sure that the decisions you're making as you add and remove cards uh, are meeting that original vision that you had when you first made your cube uh, and that your cube is aligned with, with those goals. Um, but anyways, thanks for hanging. Thanks for chilling with me here. Don't touch that dial and let's keep cubing.